Algebra 2 Honors, Lesson 7-3, Binomial Radical Expressions, okay? Uh, first of all, let's talk about like terms. Now, most of you know like terms already. Let's say you have something like this, 3x squared minus 7x squared. It's okay to subtract these because they're like terms, right? This part all right, tells you that these terms are alike. Okay? So basically, you do the 3 minus the 7, that gives you negative 4x squared. You notice nothing changes here, right? So this part right here tells you that they're like terms. The same way, you know, same thing works for adding. Let's say we have a negative 5x plus 8x. These are like terms because they both have x's, right? So this part tells you they're like terms. So a negative 5 and a positive 8 gives you positive 3x. So that would be your answer, right? It works the same way with radicals. Let's say you have 4 radical 3 minus 7 radical 3. The index and the radicand, right, if they are the same, right, if these are exactly the same, that means they are like radicals, meaning you can add or subtract them. Okay, so you could, these are like radicals, so 4 minus 7, that will give you negative 3, and then just like above here, nothing changes with the radical. Okay, and that will be your answer. Alright, so let's see, we have like negative uh, 10 cube root. 2 plus uh, 6 cube root 2. So these are like radicals because all right, you have a cube root 2 and a cube root 2 here. So these are like terms. So basically negative 10 and positive 6, all right, that gives you negative 4. And then nothing changes with the radical part. Okay, So keep that in mind. Now let's say you have something like this, let's say uh, 9 square root 5 minus 2 uh, square root 3. There's nothing you can do here because these are not like radicals. Right? Is that This is like the same thing as let's say you have like 3x minus 2x to the third. These are not like terms so there's nothing else you could do here, right? You can't combine these. So pretty much this is your answer here. There's nothing else you could do. The same way this would be your answer over here. Okay? So understand all right, when you can add and subtract and when you can't. And that's another thing. You only need all right, you only need like radicals. Alright. Actually let's just say you only need need like terms to add or subtract. All right. So the only time you're really looking for a light term is for adding or subtracting. Okay. So let's take a look at the first few examples. So right here, add or subtract if possible. So are these like terms? Yeah, it looks like they are. Same index, same radicand. So you end up with two q root x. Right. Real simple. Down here, are these like terms? Uh, yep. Looks like they're like terms. Five square root seven. Are these like terms? Nope. There's nothing else you can do. That's your answer right there. Uh, are these like terms? Yep. They both have square root xy, square root xy. So you end up with 9 square root xy. Alright, really simple. Now over here, so with the problem as is, right, like these are not like terms right now because, you know, you have different radicands. But you should recognize that, oh, it looks like I can simplify these radicands more. All right, so you always want to simplify these more and then see if they're like terms. This right here we know, all right, 18 as 9 times 2. What's the square root of 9? The square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 6, 18 rad 2. Uh, 8 is 4 times 2. Square root of 4 is 2. 4 times 2, so we have positive 8 rad 2. 
over here 72 that's a 2 times 36 oh, 36 is a nice perfect square what's the square root of 36? 6 so you have negative 3 times 6 that's a negative 18 square root 2 okay if you need to break the if you need to break the radicals down fully right, you, if you want if you guys want to break the radicals down fully all right that's fine too but I'm just showing it this way so that's a uh, much quicker so are these like radicals now yeah it looks like they are you have the same radical right same right, radicand and same index so they are radical too so let's combine the numbers in front 18 8 minus 18 let's say we're going to end up with 8 radical 2 as our final answer okay so pretty easy let's take a look at this example down here so let's break down this right here let's say this would be uh, 2 times 25 what's the square root of 25 that's 5 so we're going to end up with 5 radical 2 over here this is 16 times 2 what's the square root of 16 4 so you're going to end up with plus 12 radical 2. 18 is 9 times 2. Square root of 9 is 3. So we end up with minus 15 rad 2. So let's already end up with 2 rad 2 as a final answer, right? We have 17 here. 17 minus 15 is 2. 2 radical 2. Okay? So always break down the radicands as much as you can right? and then determine if there are any like terms. Sometimes they'll all be like terms. Sometimes maybe only a few, may sometimes maybe none. Multiplying. Now, when you are multiplying right, radicals, right, you do not need to have like terms. Okay. So when you're multiplying radicals, just multiply the regular numbers numbers with each other and multiply the radicands with each other. So basically, all we're doing is just foiling here. All right, three times two that gives me six. Three times four rad five, but multiply the three and the four, that gives you positive twelve rad five. All right, you do not multiply the three inside with the radicon. Okay, don't do that. Normal numbers with each other, radicons with each other. So we'll multiply these now. Two times two rad five, so you're only multiplying the two with the two, so you end up with positive four rad five. Then multiply here. So 2 times 4, that gives you positive 8. What's radical 5 times radical 5? That will give you just 5. Right? Radical 5 times radical 5 gives you just 5. So you're going to multiply these. So that gives you 40. Combine the like terms 40 and 6. 46. Then you have plus. Are these like terms? Yes, they are. 16 radical 5. Take a look at this one down here. So we've got uh, this the square root of two minus the square root of three squared. So this means that we're taking square root two minus square root three times square root two minus square root three. Make sure you write it out and you foil it properly. All right, don't just try and square these values. So right here, when we multiply here, square root two times square root two, that'll give you just two. Multiply here that'll give you negative square root what? 6 multiply here, that looks like it gives you negative square root 6 multiply here, negative negative gives you positive radical 3 times radical 3 is 3 so it looks like we end up with 5 I remember there are like imaginary ones right here right? so these are like terms so we end up with minus 2 rad 6 okay? and you can't do anything else, right? these are not like terms, right? this doesn't even have a radical so don't try and combine these. Okay? Those of you that always make that same mistake and just try and square these values, all right? Do not do that. Okay? Write it out twice and foil everything. Uh, multiplying conjugates. Now remember when we got introduced to conjugates in chapter five, right? Remember we didn't have to foil the whole thing when they were conjugates. All we had to multiply were the first ones with each other and the last ones with each other okay so when you have conjugates here even though they're radicals instead of the imaginaries the same idea applies you can just multiply the first ones with each other 
and the last values for each other. 2 times 2, 4. Radical 3 times negative radical 3, they said that gives you negative. Radical 3 times radical 3 is 3, so your answer is going to be 1. Right? Real simple. Okay. Over here, radical 5 times radical 5, right? That gives you 5. These are conjugates, so if those are the first terms, let's multiply the last terms. We're going to end up with a negative. Radical 2 times radical 2 is 2, so you end up with 3 as a value. Okay? Real simple. Now, let's talk about rationalizing binomials. Uh, rationalize the denominator. So, right here, Remember when we couldn't have all right, when we couldn't have the i in the bottom, all right? Well, same thing here. We can't have the radical in the bottom. Now we're gonna have to multiply by its conjugate here, which would be one plus radical five, right? So multiply by its conjugate, one plus radical five. So on top here, let's work this out. We have three times one, that gives us three. Three times rad five, that gives you positive three rad five. Uh, rad 5 times 1, that gives you positive rad 5, or 1 rad 5. And radical 5 times radical 5 gives you positive 5. So combine the like terms on top, looks like we're going to end up with 8 plus, remember there's an imaginary 1 here, so 4 rad 5. Now on the bottom, remember they're conjugates, we don't need to follow the whole thing. Multiply the first ones with each other, that gives you 1. The last ones with each other, we said that's going to give you negative 5. Rat 5 times rat 5 is 5. So this that gives you negative what? Negative 4. Okay? So it looks like we could take out a GCF here to fully reduce. We could take out a 4. That'll give us 2 plus radical 5 over negative 4. Right? So then the 4 and the negative 4 reduce. That becomes a negative 1. Then make sure you divide these by the negative 1. So 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. Radical 5 divided by negative 1 is negative radical 5. So this would be your, uh, your complete answer. Okay? So pretty, pretty easy lesson. Let's see. So take a moment, uh, work out these problems, and let's see what you guys get. Uh, let's actually work out this one right here. Uh, the 3 minus 2 rad 7 and the 10 minus rad 7. So over here, uh, let me just hit, work out this problem with you guys. So we're going to multiply by its conjugate. Its conjugate is going to be 10 plus rad 7. 10 plus rad 7, right? So 3 times 10 is 30. 3 times radical 7 is positive 3 rad 7. 10 times negative 2 rad 7, that gives you negative 20 rad 7. And in most part here, negative times positive is negative. And then you're going to end up with 2. Rad 7 times rad 7 is 7. So you simplify all this right here. Now this will give you negative 14. 30 and negative 14, so that'll give you 16. Uh, are these like terms? Yes, they are. So that'll give you negative 17 rad 7. All right. On the bottom, these are conjugates. 10 times 10 is 100. All right. That'll give you minus rad 7 times rad 7 is 7. 100 minus 7 is 93. All right. It doesn't look like there's anything we can take out to reduce with that. So that'll be your final answer for this one. Okay.